Today I'd like to share my screen with you as I review an MRI of the brain from someone who's had very significant MS and a very significant impact on their brain MRI. Don't turn away because that starts right now. For starters, we're going to split the screen up with a top-down view on the left and a side view on the right. And we have fancy doctor terms for these different views. The top-down view over here is called an axial image, and the side view over here is called a sagittal image. Let me get these out of the way. The kind of imaging that we're using is called flare-weighted imaging, and it's really cool. It makes lesions pop out in the brain tissue here. So this is an axial flare-weighted image, and this is a sagittal flare, and that's probably a bunch more information than you really wanted to know. As I move the scan on the left, you can look at that blue line to kind of help give you a sense of where we are. Here we see these white spots, and these are MS lesions, and there's a bunch of them. And so the brain stem we already see is heavily affected with a bunch of bright spots. Look at that in the pond. Significant number of spots there. It doesn't stop, we see here in the midbrain. And so we've learned that the brainstem is heavily affected. Now I'm gonna go back down because I was so focused on that structure in the center, I didn't look anywhere else around it. So now I'm going back up and I'm kind of looking more around these areas. Those are the temporal lobes. And here what I see is, again, a heavy, T2 burden of disease. In other words, in English, a lot of spots. Now, this is a good example of where there's been lesions along the periventricular white matter. There's been so many of them, they've kind of glommed together. And the word that we use is coalesced. You can follow along where I am on the left as I move the right-hand side. And what I'm going to do is go across the brain from left to right. So there's an ear. And as we move across, we have a look at these same lesions from a different angle. These are cortical and juxtacortical lesions, and there's a bunch of them. And here we see a tremendous number of lesions along this long structure of the brain. This is called the corpus callosum. And these lesions are kind of jutting out like spokes on a wheel. And there's a particular term for that called a Dawson's finger. Here as we move on the other side, again, you see a very heavy burden of disease. There's almost nowhere along there that's not impacted by MS. Another very concerning finding is the degree of brain volume loss that we see here. Uh, this brain has very accelerated brain volume loss. Now, I'll just focus on the top-down view. And I'm actually using a scan where water is now dark. And we've given a contrast dye. So you see these squiggles. These are blood vessels and they have the contrast in them, and so we can see them. Here you see more squiggles. What you don't want to see is that any of the dye leaks out into the brain tissue. You can see here there are no new contrast-enhancing lesions. I want to show you the degree of atrophy. These sulci here are spaces between the parts of the brain, and at their age they should be touching. And so you see that the spaces here are way too generous. As we come down to the third ventricle, this space should be about half that width. The other thing that I want to point out, which is concerning prognostically, is the number of T1 black holes. So here are some here, there are some small ones there, there, and over here we see them. Here we see a bunch of them. So as you look around the ventricles, you see these dark areas. And what that represents, actually, is an area where the damage from inflammation was so intense, it actually ate away at the brain tissue and it left a hole. Hence the reason we oftentimes refer to those as T1 black holes. This person has an excessive number of T1 black holes, which is a bad prognostic indicator. Today I wanted to show you one other tool. Here we have a volumetric analysis, which is fancy talk for we can actually measure the size of the brain and compare the size of the brain to other people the same gender and age. And that's what you have in front of you. And so this first graph here is looking at the size of the whole brain. And compared to other people their age and gender, they're in the second percentile. And what that means is if there's 100 people their age and gender, 98 of them have larger brains than they do, and only one or two have brains that are smaller. Here, this is looking at the thalamus, which is that green structure, and it's a very important structure in the center of the brain. 
And what we see here is the thalamus is very, very small. It's in the first percentile. Now this middle graph, and what we see is the size of the ventricle. In other words, the size of the space, the black space, is really large. It's 99th percentile. And so this is a mathematical way of identifying brain volume loss and quantifying it. I'm still trying to figure out if this is a format that you're interested in. So definitely leave a comment in the section below and tell me if so, I'm really happy to share other MRI brain and spinal cord, etc. And people until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, be safe and take care.